I believe I have positioned myself where you cannot see the plants that are dying on the windowsill behind me. Hello, 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 hello. I'm here to talk today about my favourite books of 2022 because I read some books and I picked some favourites and I want to talk about them. That was simpler than expected. I love, love, love watching these videos. I watch them all through the year and I really hope that that's enough of an explanation as to why I'm posting this in the middle of January. Well, I'm filming it in the middle of January. Don't even know when it's going to be uploaded yet. So I read 60 books in 2022 and I have picked 10 favourites to talk about today. I'm really happy with the books I've read. I feel like I've read so many good books, some, you know, things that I push myself out of my comfort zone for. I didn't like some of the books but that's okay because life is about experiencing things and sometimes it's okay to have bad reading experiences. I could have probably put 15 on this list but like I don't know the, the five that kind of just got knocked off were really good books but I don't know like I, I don't know if they'll go down in history as my favourite books not that my favourite books are going down in history. Essentially I think that these 10 books will stay with me for a long time like these top five are going to be all-time favourites. So as I said we'll start with number 10. I'm going to put them up here because I'm at university all of these books are at home so I don't have any of them with me even though I have kept them all because they're my favourites. Number 10 is Loveless by Alice Oseman. I'm really sorry if I'm looking down to read my notes but I've got like I didn't want to just sit here and go loveless and then not know what to talk about so I've, I've made myself some pointers. This is the book that I thought would be my favourite book of the year when I read it. I loved this book, I felt completely immersed in the reading experience of it. At the time it was exactly what I needed to read, it was just the perfect reading experience. I sat down on a train to Manchester, pretty much finished it in like three, four hours. I mean I didn't but I got through it very very quickly. It was just the perfect book for me to read at the time. Now this isn't directly related to the Heartstopper universe, I'm not sure if it's like technically a part of it but it doesn't have any of the Heartstopper characters which doesn't bother me. I've never read Heartstopper, I watched like the first two episodes. It's not my sort of thing really, I don't mind it but I don't know. So this is a coming of age story of a teenager who's just got into Durham University Oh. She's had no romantic experiences before and she kind of wants to, she kind of wants to crack on and there's a really interesting discussion kind of about the pressure on teenagers to get involved sexually and romantically before they're necessarily ready for. And it also discusses sexuality, self-image, relationships, whether that be romantic or friendship. The friendships in this book, oh my goodness, a lot of them make serious mistakes but they really learn to overcome these as adults in a much more mature way than they're used to. I just found this book a really heartwarming, wholesome read that talks about emotional topics in a very sensible and mature way without feeling the need to sort of push them on the reader. It makes it feel very natural and normal and human and I really really loved that. So moving on to my next book, the ninth favourite of the year, we have Family of Liars by E. Lockhart. This is the prequel to We Were Liars and I'm not sure exactly how much I can say to try and avoid spoilers for We Were Liars if you haven't read it. But this is essentially set the generation before We Were Liars, I think it's like in the 80s or something, and the three aunts from the first book are three teenage sisters. I believe they were teenagers or one might still be a child. This book does everything We Were Liars does but better. The doomed romance is better, the relationships are better, the betrayal is better, the drug abuse storyline is better. There's a twist at the end of We Were Liars, there's a shock ending that a lot of people don't like. I'm quite neutral to it but it does feel like it just sort of comes out of nowhere, it doesn't feel like it was laced very well through the entire book. It sort of comes in out of left field and you're like, oh, that's not very satisfying, in my opinion at least. Family of Lies takes that thing at the end, that concept, that essence, and it just implements it at the beginning of the book. So it's laced all the way through and it actually feels like it has a meaning. It feels like the characters that are there have a purpose to be this specific thing. I also just absolutely love the relationships between the three sisters. They're so, they're so done so accurately. And I like to believe that if I was ever in the situation that some of these girls are in, in Family of Lies, that my sisters would do the same thing for me. And then in position number eight, we have a book a little bit different to the two that we've just talked about. This is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is a reread for me. I think it's probably the third time I've read it. I read it twice when I was younger, but I've only started tracking my reading. I think I started tracking in 2020. 2021 one of those years so i'm kind of taking 2021 as my big reset year and everything i read before that will have been either in a reading slump or before that reading slump and then we're going back to when i was like 14 so i don't really count it so that's essentially why i'm allowing a reread into my top 10 because i know that's not very conventional um if i were to do this video again next year and i reread one of these books i wouldn't let it 
onto my top 10. So this is one of very few classics I read this year, the others being like the Narnia books. I'm not a massive classic reader. I really want to get into it more because I think when you properly love a classic it's just this wonderful feeling of wow literature has been happening for so many years and all of these takes were written by someone in the 1800s and it's gorgeous and it's still things that I can relate to in 2022. I know that the big criticism of this book is the fact that Jane does not remain unmarried at the end. She actually, bit of a spoiler, but you've had 200 years to read it. She takes a decision to marry Mr. Rochester as she's kind of been leading up to for a lot of the book. However, I kind of disagree with that take for two main reasons. Reason number one is that this book was published in the mid 1800s. Now there is absolutely no way that Charlotte Bronte could have taken a novel with the main character being an unmarried female who never Ever chooses to marry she took this to the publishing house they would have said no what type of moral lead are you giving to the women of this generation that is we're not publishing this and if on the off chance that she had been published there is absolutely no way that this book would have gained the popularity or the traction that it does to have still become a classic in the modern day because it would have been seen as you know it wasn't setting a good example for women so aside from the fact that she probably needed to have married off her main character in order to create a novel that would have been so timeless I really enjoy the romance. I think it's a timeless representation of romance in like a really pure form. And I'm not a romance reader. I don't like romance novels, but if you give me something that has a subplot of a really good romance, I will absolutely love it. There's obviously an element of a wife being submissive to a husband, but this is not new because she gets married to him. Jane has been like this throughout the entire book. So I really don't believe that the marriage of Jane as a character has an overly important effect on her as a character i think it just has effect has an effect on the story and not on her moral standing as a woman she's still a strong female lead in a classic novel from the 1800s she's still a feminist icon her marriage doesn't really affect that i don't believe anyway we'll move on to some more contemporary literature again and this is I think this was published like in the last few years. This is American Dirt by Janine Cummings and this is my seventh book. Seventh favourite book of the year. So this is a runaway story following a mother and son who are fleeing cartel violence. So their entire family has been murdered because the father of the family is a journalist and he published a piece about this head of a cartel and he didn't like it so he murdered the entire family. So the mother and son have escaped and this is split timeline now between them fleeing the cartel and running to the US and also from before the murders when the mother ran a bookshop and this guy who would eventually murder her entire family comes in and they begin a friendship. I just found this such a captivating fast read that I literally could not put down. I'd put it down, I'd take a drink of my drink and then I'd be like, no, hang on, let me pick this back up again. I can't stop. It's such a powerful story as well that's conveyed in something that's so easy and fast to read. I just, I just loved it. For book number six, we have The Secret History by Donna Tartt, another very popular one. This is an eerie dark academic murder story about a group of very rich Greek students killing their best friend after he discovers something dangerous about them. So this book is just not for the plot driven girlies. There is a really interesting plot. It's completely fascinating, but most of this plot is told through speech and through dialogue and through the main character kind of picking up on signals, not because he's actually there. So if you like a fast paced plot, don't pick this one up. I just found this to be an outstanding character study with really thick and detailed language and descriptions that takes a while to get into, but I just found it to be so worth it. And I'm still thinking about it and I read it in March. So we're now onto my top five books of 2022 and we are gonna be switching up, switching up the, the themes, the pace a little bit with Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. This was another reread, but again, I read it a good few years ago and I loved it then and I loved it even more now. Nevermore is a whimsical middle grade fantasy book in which a cursed 11 year old is taken to live in an ever-changing magical hotel and compete in magic trials. I would advertise this to people who like Harry Potter but want something a little bit more contemporary and a little bit more bizarre and also if you don't want to support JK Rowling but you do want that kind of middle grade fantasy go for this. I think the biggest testament to a children's book is when it can hold up under adult reading and I read it first when I was 17, I'm now 19 
I just love it. I just love it. It has the most incredible world building without feeling the need to pause the story and pile in a load of exposition, which just means that it's the most completely immersive reading experience. And I wanna live in this world and I'm so excited to read the next in the series. So for my fourth favorite book of the year, we have The Christie Affair by Nina de Garmont. I don't even know how many people I have recommended this to now. This is the tale of Agatha Christie's disappearance, but it's told from the perspective of her husband's mistress but it's got so much more. Please do not be fooled by this kind of romance drama cover that it's got going on. And also by the fact that everyone just says, oh, it's the husband's mistress telling the story. There is so much more to it than just that. This is an incredibly beautiful discussion on womanhood. plus a murder mystery story that has just the most satisfying conclusion ever. Everything is tied up so perfectly, apart from a couple of things actually, but I'm really glad that they left those up to your decision. If you want something that's easy to read writing wise, but will also hit you quite hard in the feels, this is for you. So we're now onto the top three books of the year. So for my bronze award, my third favorite book of 2022, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this was the first Taylor Jenkins Reid book I read. I've read two more since. This is still my favourite. I love it. So like The Christie Affair, I kind of also underestimated this one. I thought I was going to be in for a little bit of celebrity drama, a scandal, and then this just came and like slapped me around the face with emotional pain. <laughs> Please do not be fooled by the light and the pretty cover. This is full of seriously tested family relationships that are desperately trying to break out from a pattern of generational trauma and I just lapped it up. I really didn't want this book to end but I really wanted to keep reading and I just wish I could read it again the first time and I tried to replicate this with uh, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Carrie Soto is Back and I really like Carrie Soto is Back. I didn't really care about Evelyn Hugo but they don't hit the same as Malibu Rising in my personal opinion. So my second favourite book of the year, my silver award goes to Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. I go on about this book so much that I went into Waterstones with my friends. They found it, pointed it and went, this is the book you talk about. This has gained a lot of popularity in recent months. So I wouldn't be surprised if you've heard about it, but if you haven't, it is a female chemist in the 1960s navigating life as a single mother and TV chef. One of my favorite things about this book is the matter of fact, no nonsense writing that perfectly encapsulates Elizabeth Zott as a character and how she just does not understand the logic of gender roles but it's matter of fact no nonsense in a way that isn't expositioning again I've used that word so many times in this video the only way I can describe it is by saying that it draws the dots but it leaves you to connect them the author knows what's happening she knows you know what's happening but she's not gonna connect these dots for you she's not gonna over explain or condescend you and I love that because it just kind of exposes the implicit nature of misogyny and I just really really love this book because it's such a hopeful uplifting way of telling a story that could have just been really really dreary and it was just an absolute joy to read. And we're onto my gold award, my favorite book of the year. And this will not be a surprise if you know me. And it also will probably not be a surprise if you follow me on TikTok. So you should probably go and do that. My favorite book of the year was The Book Thief by Marcus Susak. This was another reread. So again, if I reread it ever again, it won't come to the top, but it was just because I read it when I was like, 13, 14. This book is just so stunning. It is a tragically beautiful tale of a girl who learns a love for literature by stealing books when she becomes fostered by a family in a very rundown area of Germany in the middle of World War II. The writing and the storytelling manages to be so vivid while telling such a melancholy story. I mean, it's literally narrated by death. It's narrated by death. The entire book is narrated by death. <laughs> I think this is the perfect example of a book that takes a really horrific element of history, such as the Holocaust, and then doesn't talk about it in a way that's deliberately re-traumatizing the reader for shock value and for trauma porn. It just uses it as a basis to tell the stories of these characters and the, the love, ultimately the love that they have for each other in such an awful, environment. So those were the favourites of all the books that I read in 2022. I really enjoyed just sitting down and talking about them. I've done a few book videos before and I definitely want to do more this year. That's one of my goals. I've loved just sitting down and chatting about books. <laughs> Please let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books. I would love to hear your thoughts on them because I love just narrowing on about my favourite things. Also tell me if you didn't like them. 
I might cry, but just tell me anyway, because I want to know what you didn't like about them or if you're planning to read them soon, if you've got any on your TBR. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you subscribe. Maybe you come back for some more content and I hope to see you soon. So goodbye.